I'm not afraid to admit it. I have zero skill when it comes to interior design. I can look at what other people do and say, oh my gosh, that looks fantastic. Or that is completely hideous, but I can't come up with it on my own. I'm just not that creative. So when this video by Caroline Winkler popped up on my newsfeed on YouTube one day, I had to watch it. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on these things that she says, and you can tell me whether you agree with me or with her. And I know that you want to choose me. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I find this brand of medical grade pantry organization to be just as sexually satisfying as the next guy. Okay. I get it. I like it. And of all the personality disorders that exist, I think this is one of the more fun ones. However, this brand of home organization is never going to give you an organized home. Not only is it expensive, but it usually doesn't even fix the real problem. When I have an interior design client who has a messy home, the problem isn't usually that their M&Ms aren't color coded. The problem is that we all have a ton of stuff and we don't know how to get rid of it. We don't know what to get rid of and we don't know how to arrange the things we actually keep. And you can spend all the time in the world pinning images on Pinterest and trying to design the perfect space. But if your floor is covered in clutter, then it truly doesn't make a bit of difference what rug you end up buying. I'm going to tell you which organization products are worth getting, which are not. And more importantly, the organization design principles that will keep your home organized and running smoothly. My name. So far, I love everything that she's saying. And I 100% agree. As a professional realtor, when I go into a client's home to help them get their house ready for the market, we're not worried that the pantry is color coded, are we? We are worried about getting rid of excess stuff. We want the pantry to look as large as possible. That means getting rid of a, crap, a bunch of crap that you're not using. So it's not the color coding. It is the decluttering and the getting rid of stuff that you don't need. So let's see what else she says. My name is Caroline and this is Home Organization from an Interior Design Perspective. <laughs> home organization video on YouTube is pretty much telling you the same thing. Buy this, buy this, buy this hat, buy this gadget, buy this product. Consume. Home organization is about more than just products and gadgets and hacks. It's about systems that make your life work better. And great home organization has to meet three requirements. Visual declutter, ease of access, and ease of maintenance. And we're going to get into all three with 10 tips to keep your home organized. <laughs> Tip number one, corral your crap. This blows people's mind. If you're looking at your nightstand or your kitchen counter or your coffee table and you're like, it's just a lot of stuff. It's visually busy. Corral it. Just place things on a tray. It will, it will blow your mind at how quickly it solves the problem of visual declutter. And it doesn't have to be a tray. You can use a book. You can use a cutting board. You can use a stack of magazines. Something that takes a bunch of individual items and then instead of five items, you just have one item. It sounds like semantics, but it makes a huge difference and group items in groups of threes. This literally blew my mind. I have been using trays throughout my house. I keep them in the bathroom and I usually have one for hand soap, one for lotion. Um, I have them in the kitchen and I put the salt, the pepper, the olive oil, the butter bell. I like to kind of crowd them together, but I didn't know why. I didn't know why I did this. I just liked how it looked, but this is the perfect explanation as to why that is a good idea. It takes many things and makes them one, which visually reduces the clutter. Thank you. Like if for no other reason, this whole video exists. Now I know why that design principle works. To put the spaghetti straps into the little hooks and the clip and the, I have a life to live. I'm a busy lady. Make it as easy as possible to get those clothes put away and they'll stay put away. End of discussion. End of discussion. This is a big one. Drop zones. Creating intentional drop zones. Where are the keys going? Where's the coat going? Where's the bag going? It sounds simple enough, but the way you create these drop zones is extremely important. And that gets us into home organization requirement number three. 
ease of maintenance. And this one is the most important because if it's not easily maintained by everyone in the home, then it's not going to work. There's nothing more possible than changing human behavior. It's hard to create new habits for yourself, let alone for me to create new habits for my pretend partner or my pretend kids. And if they can't uphold my new organization system, then I'm left doing it all alone. And that's not why I got pretend married. The best way to create drop zones is I just love this woman. Like she does not know me. She has no idea who I am, but I seriously want to go to her city and just make her my new best friend. She is hilarious. Is to watch how you, your roommates, your family, watch where you are naturally dropping your stuff when you come home and then put the drop zones there and just make it intentional. If now, this actually was pretty brilliant. Our natural inclination is to drop everything on the kitchen island because when you walk in from the garage and we all come in through the garage, you know, we pull into the driveway, we park, we come in through the garage, walk down the hallway. Now we're in this big, great room and the island is right there in the middle separating the kitchen from the living room, we throw everything on the island. It drives me crazy because we put in this giant island when we remodeled our kitchen because we wanted it to look amazing. And it's covered with crap all of the time. My purse, both phones, my husband's wallet, the keys, the backpacks from the kids, the water bottles, the lunchbox that needs to get cleaned out, like the mail, everything goes on the island. And when I watched her talking about this, about how hard it is to change human behavior. Well, let me let me show you what she says. All the keys are always going on the table, put a freaking bowl on that table. If the coats are always going in that corner, put a hook in the corner. If the bag is always being dropped there, put a table, put a chair, put a stool. Good design and good organization systems are not about making people adhere to your system. It's about making the system adhere to the habits people already have. Loved this. So I had a little nightstand that used to be in a guest room and we weren't using it anymore. And it was just kind of like left in the garage to wither away. And I took it out. And after much cleaning, because it was, you know, garage schmutz all over it, cleaned it, I put it right next to the island and made this into a little drop zone. So now we have our cell phone charger there. We have a bowl where my husband can put his wallet and his keys. And I still don't have a place to put my purse. So I made hooks in our laundry room where we can hang the purse and the backpack and the baseball hat and all of the stuff and put in a file organizer where we could put the mail as well. So I am having to kind of train myself to put stuff in the laundry room but it's not that hard because it's right next to the island. So by making just a couple of small changes, the little table for the stuff that normally ended up on the island that was small and the mud room, which is next to the island for the bigger items, it seems to be working really well. So thank you, Miss Carolyn. I don't know if you can hear my chickens. Somebody just laid an egg. She's cackling like crazy person. Did you know that chickens have this whole language. So if you hear that means, hello, I just laid an egg. Could I have the rest of the flock? Please applaud my awesomeness. <laughs> it's not like I do this every single day or anything like that. Tip number four is one of the very few home organization products that you I highly recommend. You should definitely get this. There's a bunch of versions of this tiered Lazy Susan that you can get online. I got mine off Amazon. I'm using two of these in my tiny little linen cabinet. It holds all my toiletries, all my medical stuff, all my travel products. This product gets us into organization principle number two ease of access. So yes, we want to visually declutter and we want to find a place for everything. We want everything to have a place, but if that item cannot be easily accessed when you need it, then it's never going to go back there. It's okay. I get what she's saying, but I hate these lazy Susans. A, I think they're ugly. B, they're always so flimsy. They never, never last. I have tried these before, especially when they're tiered like this. They're just so dang flimsy. They never seem to hold up. And honestly, I just don't think that this looks really nice. So just am I totally off base? Do you love you a good lazy Susan? Tell me how you feel in the comments.
maximize your weirdo spaces. If you're living in, especially like a small apartment like I am, and you're looking at some weird little corner or alcove, and you're like, that's a weird space. Guess what? That space is going to be for one of two things. You're either going to make it into a cute little designed vignette, or it's gonna be storage. And to capitalize on your weirdo spaces, you are gonna want a couple great organization gadgets. For example, in my own apartment, in my bedroom, there is this bizarre like 10 inches of space to the side of my closet. Feels like that could have been more closet space, but okay. I decided that space is gonna hang my purses, it's gonna hang my backpacks and all the bags I have. This is one of my favorite tools you can buy. It's pretty heavy duty, it's like very nice quality. I got mine offline. You can get a chrome version, you can get a white version. Not only is it a wall hook that can go into your wall, but you can lift it up and out to tilt it this way and extend out this way. These are actually intended to go in your closet, like a little extender hook. I think they're called, um, I don't know. You can put this in your closet to hold belts, to hold purses, and then you can extend it out in your packing or you're trying to like look through a bunch of items, hang a bunch of hangers here. It's very helpful. What is the word? What is the word? Closet um, pull out rod. A valet rod. It's called a valet rod. When people do really fancy custom closets, they get these valet rods built in off. Okay, I'm not going to be buying any valet rods anytime soon, but I do love how she said if you have this weird little area to either use it for additional storage or to make it a design element. And I have exactly this kind type of space in my bedroom. We have a big window seat. It's a gable that sticks out on the front of the house. So from the front of the house, it's beautiful. Inside the room, you end up with these stupid little long skinny sections that are totally impractical and nobody sits on the window seat. Like who sits on the window seat gazing out the window over the driveway? Nobody, nobody does. So it's wasted space as far as I'm concerned. And even worse on the side of the gable is this little narrow wall with a sloping ceiling. So I can't really put, I mean, I could probably find a dresser, a chest, that was really, really narrow, but not too high because then if I go over to it, I don't want to be banging my head on the ceiling. I'm six feet tall. I will absolutely bang my head on the ceiling at any opportunity given the chance because even though it's like right at eye level, I forget that it's at eye level and I bend forward and I smack my head on the ceiling. So what do we do with this weird area? make it into a little vignette, make it into a design area. So I came up with these two ledges. In fact, I talked about this in another video. The little ledges is just a place for storing photos and some decor items. And now it looks purposeful and not like a complete and utter afterthought, which is truly what it was. World for the way that he has changed my life. If I have something that is scuffed up before I get rid of it, try the magic eraser on it. I don't care what the damage is. It probably helps. It's a hundred percent. I know that that really doesn't have anything to do with organization or interior design, but I go through magic erasers like they are paper towels. Love them. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, the end. That's the end. I'm not, I have no association with the Magic Racer lobby. I'm just a very big fan. Closed storage. Closed storage. This is so important when you're buying a piece of furniture, you're buying storage items for yourself. Just give yourself a break. You make your life a little bit easier. I usually opt for the closed storage. Now, there's some open shelving. It's really beautiful and nice, and it looks great on the Instagram photo but it's not usually actually great for storing stuff. We end up putting like the wooden beads on there or we buy a vase just to go on the shelf because there's nothing we already own that we would be visually happy with storing on the shelves. I don't know, it's a weird thing. That being said, open shelving can be really nice sometimes in your kitchen to break up too much cabinetry to give the eye a break. But usually if you have open storage, open shelving, and you're really using it to store a lot of stuff. If I can, if I can afford to go the closed storage route, I did the closed storage. Give yourself a break. Put I agree with this so much. Like if you're using it for storage, you don't want to have to keep it visually clutter free and beautiful all the time. 
That's not really the purpose. The purpose was to hide the clutter so that I don't have to look at it every day. In fact, I've got pieces of furniture throughout my house where we just throw stuff in and slam the door. In fact, there's an awesome channel called Clutterbug where she has this system where she categorizes it by you're either a butterfly, a ladybug, a bee, or a cricket, I think is the fourth one. And it is, do you like to see all of your stuff or do you like it to hide it away? And then from there, do you want it to be macro or micro? And for me, I want to hide it away, but macro, meaning everything goes into one box. I don't want individual files where each piece of paper goes in its own file. If it takes too long to put it away, it never gets put away. I digress. Love the Clutterbug channel as well. And so I want to hide stuff away, but I want to make it easier for myself. The easier it is to put away, the cleaner my house will look. That's that. And if it's all open storage, if it's all glass front cabinets, it's too much. The only open shelving I have in my kitchen are for the dishes that I use for every meal every single day. They are constantly getting used going in and out of the dishwasher. So I don't mind because we use them every single day, but I don't really put stuff in there that would make it look super messy and disorganized. Tip number nine is probably the most important one. Purge. Purge your stuff. Declutter. It doesn't matter how much you organize if at the end of motorcycle. Okay. Thank you. It doesn't matter how much you organize if you just have too much stuff. And if you're anything like me, you do. Most likely the things that are overcluttering your home, you don't need. Purging your home is not just something you need to do once a spring. It needs to be an easy light lift that you can do a little bit every week, every month. Here's some easy tips to help accomplish a declutter or purge that's not gonna overwhelm you. Declutter for 15 minutes. Set a timer and do what you can do in 15 minutes. Put stuff in the donation pile, in the throwaway pile. 15 minutes, that's all you gotta do. I heard this from another organization. Okay, now this is really the only thing that I think I disagree with her on this purging 100%, but 15 minutes, no, no, you got to go big or go home. If you give yourself 15 minutes to purge, here's what happens when I do that. Do I really need 97 of these pens in this drawer? Yes, I do. I need the red one and I need the white one and I need the yellow one and I need the one that usually doesn't have any ink in it and drives me nuts because my husband gave it to me when, you know, I made my very first sale and it has sentimental value to me. No, if you only give yourself this little tiny window of time, you're going to talk yourself out of it. And then you end up with your trash bag that has two items in it. I say, give yourself like one afternoon, maybe quarterly, not all the time, but give yourself couple of hours where you're going to go through and let's say you're tackling your closet. You're going to have to go through that closet and be ruthless and decide what's going to stay, what's going to go, what's going to get donated, what's going to get just thrown in the garbage because it's ratty and nobody would ever pay money for this and nobody wants it. So I do think you need to take a little bit more than 15 minutes to go through and purge your stuff because let's face it, we see a lot of crap. Sellers are like, hey, I want to sell my house and I can't even see the floor because they have so much stuff in their room that it takes a lot more than 15 minutes to purge a lifetime of hoarding crap that you absolutely just don't need. YouTuber, do it on a dime, check out her stuff. She's wonderful. If it takes me more than five, but sometimes it's still so hard to do and what to keep and what to get rid of. I'm not an organization freak. I haven't made it my whole personality, but it affects interior design, which I love. Good organization should let all the beautiful items in your home shine. Let's let them shine. Let's hype them up. Our homes are full of real people living real lives. You can build systems that make your life run more smoothly. 
And with that, I 100% concur. You've got to check out Caroline's channel. I just think this is great. I just recently discovered her a few weeks ago and I've binge watched half of her videos. She is just so dang funny and has some really, really good insight. So I will link to her channel down below. What other videos would you like me to react to? Feel free to leave them in the comments down below and maybe yours will be featured in a future video. Thanks for watching.